Good afternoon and welcome to Afternoon Express South Africa. I'm Danilo Aquisto. It's a brand new week and I'm super excited because Winner Home is here on Afternoon Express. And today we are so excited because last week was all about inspiration, but today we get down to business. Our three contestants received their first design brief today. So everybody's in the loft, all of our contestants as well as our three judges today. So looking forward to seeing what their first challenge will be. The show today is also jam-packed full of sport. We've got two professional players from IX Cape Town in the loft with us today. They've got a 24-hour soccer tournament coming coming up soon and I don't think I can even stay awake for 24 hours but they're here to tell us more about that tournament and it is for a good cause so hopefully we can all get out there and make sure we support them. Uh, the show today is also full of sport like I did mention so we want you to go into the social sites and tell us which do you think is the best local soccer team. I won't tell you what mine is because Ike's in the loft but we'll have to get your opinions as well on the social media sites at Afternoon Chat using that official hashtag Afternoon Express. Otherwise go and comment on the Facebook page there is a status there for you you can go and leave your comments and we'll read through all of those a little bit later on right here on Afternoon Express. It's cooking in the kitchen too. Bonnie's on standby. <laughs> Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to your favorite kitchen in the land. And with me is our favorite chef, Clem the Gym Pedro. <laughs> Don't you love you so it? Much. I do like it. <laughs> so we're making something quite hearty and warm to just mm -mm. chase away that winter blues. I'm in denial that it's winter. I know, clearly. I'm looking at you like super summery. Okay. Why? Why not? Just go why for not? it. Why not? Because okay. I can. So, so what we're we making today? is a cauliflower bake, but it's not the normal cauliflower bake we're so used to. I'm gonna show you a different way to prepare a cauliflower. I'm gonna add some Swiss chard to it and some cream, because I mean, it's winter. So keep yeah, it clean, yeah, why yeah. not? Keep it, keep, keep it coming. <laughs> but now, the only way I know how to make um, cauliflower is to boil it. Yeah, we're not doing that. We're not yeah, boiling it at so all. So I'm really excited that you're gonna show me the second way I've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> And obviously pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. Dan is standing by with our first guest. Indeed. So today we're joined by two of IX Cape Town's players, Nathan Paulsa uh, and Jonathan Armogam, uh, who will also be taking part in a soccer tournament coming up in Cape Town called Kick24. We'll be talking a bit about that later on, but first let's chat soccer. Welcome to the loft, gents. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having us. So I feel very intimidated by both of you because you're incredibly tall people and you're so famous when it comes to the sort of soccer scene locally. And I think it's such a massive industry. So I'm actually going to start with you, Nathan. Your contract came to expiration in June, but you have re-signed on for another year. Thank goodness. I think all the Ajax fans are going, Whew, thank goodness. But if there was maybe a team that you could have signed on to in that interim phase, well, what would it have been? Where are your dreams? Um, I'm a Arsenal fan. Um, so Arsenal, but look, I mean, there's there's no other team I would rather play for in the PSL than Ajax. You know, I'm from Athlone, so uh, homeboy. So it's all about your dreams, keeping it local, making sure you're supporting the communities that you guys came from. Yeah, which yeah. I think is the power of having soccer. It's such a such a close part to people's hearts, and particularly in our country. Um, let's chat a little bit about uh, your career, Jonathan. Both of you are actually uh, older than 30, and I've heard a lot of people criticize footballers for being older than 30 and therefore not being relevant anymore. What's your take? Yeah, clearly so. not, but I'm <laughs> clearly saying clearly not. not but <laughs> so I'm 35, and I think people do criticize um, older players, but I think they're wrong because older players bring a lot of experience with mm. them and mm. they offer a lot of guidance to um, youngsters. Yeah. yeah. The teams itself need some kind of mentors, right? Yep. Yes. And the captains? Um, oh, well, usually they, they say the ideal is to have 11, 11, 11 captains on the field, you know? So, yeah. so the guy who has the armband is the guy who can, who can, who can um, um, uh, pull the team um, mm. to, to, to together when mm. it's, when, when it's uh, tough. Times, you know, uh, not always the the most 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 skillful player or the or the or the or the, or the um, best player, but mm. but the guy who can who can uh, lead, you yeah. know, from a, um, a verbal. Yeah, um, perspective. perspective. So yeah. let's talk about sort of club soccer and the PSL. And I mean, a lot of youngsters are so in love with the game itself. They're so in love with the sport, but it seems to be associated kind of um, with. Rough, I don't know if it's, if it's a rough nature of kids wanting to get into soccer because it is the cool thing to do, it is, it is the in thing. And, and you're very big on character development, right, Jonathan? So tell us about uh, why that is a passion of yours. Because um, I thought, oh, I think soccer is huge, especially if you go all around the world. Soccer is um, played by middle income and low income classes of people. Mm. And for me, when I got involved in soccer, I think I loved it so much, but I don't think I was emotionally equipped for the pressures that come with that. So I wasn't emotionally equipped for 
people's approval or people's um, mm. or for fans or success and I didn't know how to handle that yeah. and because of that I made a lot of mistakes and fortunately I recovered and that's why I'm so passionate about character, mm. character development because I see the value of having good character yeah. that's going to take you beyond 35. Yeah. Oh, would, would you football. mind unpacking some of those mistakes that you made? Because I think it is important that we be transparent about this stuff because kids mm -hmm. assume that there is a lot of fame and glory that comes with it, but with that fame and glory comes a whole bunch of other things too. Mm -hmm. What was it for you? 100%. I think um, this is a beautiful game. It's an amazing game. And I love this game. But like I say, the, there are a lot of pressures. It's become more of a business now. So yeah. before, maybe about 20 years ago, it's to be for the love of the game. But now it's more of a business, so results are the fo is a focus. And we can't be naive, it is a business. Mm -hmm. But like I say, because of those pressures that I didn't know how to handle, I think I became involved or to, maybe to say to cope with those type of pressures, mm -hmm. I started drinking more, started partying more, started getting into bad relationships. I, I wasn't really committed in mm -hmm. a relationship because yeah. I, didn't, I don't think I, I was able to cope with that. So... Mm. Yeah. You know, footballers make themselves very popular boyfriends, <laughs> I suppose, in some ways. But you, you said you've worked through that and got to that point now where you are playing the game because mm. it's something that you love. I mean, did you have a similar experience or was it different for every player? Um, I would say, I would say a similar. Um, I also, you know, uh, um, adopted some bad habits. Um, but I, I come from a, from a good family, um, mm. you know, so um, I always knew what the, what what the, um, right way was yeah. um, but obviously being a, a pro a, a pro um, 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 a player there's there's pressures on you yeah. and it's a it's it's a um it's 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 built from the industry you know yeah, totally. it's, it's an ego thing a, a pride yeah. thing you know exactly. as a, a, a young boy you 18 years of age just out of out of school and uh, you earning in in your mind big you know, mm. and mm. you haven't been taught how to handle fame. Mm. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and you've been brought uh, onto attention. a team because you're a talent. They've said yes. they've spotted you. You've got what it takes. And yeah. they've got like, yeah, I've got what yeah. it takes. So let's speak to that 18-year-old. Let's speak directly to uh, maybe parents who, who are raising children who are really keen on the sort of sports lifestyles. Um, how do you prepare and how do you get involved in something like the PSL leagues and getting involved in teams like, like Ajax? How do you start a career and how do you make sure that you keep it sustainable and don't get lost in the trap of, of, of your own fame? Maybe you may want to try that, Jonathan. It's a difficult one, but um, on the practical side, obviously it's important to train. So it's important to get into an academy. Yeah. Ajax is a good academy <laughs> to get into. So it's important to be in a good academy on the practical side. But what yeah. I would speak to parents and even to kids coming up is that um, value character as much as you value um, physical talent. Mm -hmm. Value it as much as, because I think I'm 35 now and I'm reaching the end of my career, but my talent is not carrying me beyond where I need to be. It's yeah. the character that's carrying me beyond. So I speak to that youngster and say, yeah, just put them on equal levels or put, yeah. put them on equal playing grounds, playing fields. Yeah. You mentioned that your family was quite integral to your sort of making sure that you, you, you remain stable in that process. But what is it that would humble you in a space like that? What is it that you need in your life to make sure that you didn't get lost, lost in that space? I think for for me is that is that uh, seeing see, seeing um, football as a job, you know, yeah. it's not it's not who I am, mm. uh, you know, because you can you can only play football until a certain age. So if you um, adopt that attitude that 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 football is who you are, you will find out soon that it's you will watch them come up short, mm. you know. And uh, I know a few a few a few players that actually still still um, live. Like yeah. like that, like you know, I am a, a, a footballer, and that's all that, that I that I am. Yeah. And when those those added added uh, pressures come, they they um they uh, crumble. So so sure. from a um, holistic point point of view, uh, I think it's important as yeah. a, a footballer and, and a, a man to mm -hmm. to um, to uh, to equip yourself yeah. with 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 more more than just your your ability and and, exactly. and, and strength you know it's it's about life life it's life what's going to outlive all of that yeah, which is yeah really because important. look i mean I've, I've been playing pro for 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 um, 16 um, years mm -hmm. you know um but uh, ability can only um take you so, you so far, far. Mm -hmm. um everything else is hard work and 
attitude, you know. Awesome. James, just, yeah. it's so good to hear it coming from the pros themselves. I think youngsters always think that the pros love the lifestyle. It's just their parents telling them otherwise. So it's nice to hear it from the pros. You guys aren't going anywhere. We'll chat more about uh, what you guys are up to with Kick24 next, OK? So after the break, South Africa, we're back with Nathan and Jonathan, like I mentioned, along with the organizers of Kick24 to chat more about the tournament. And in the kitchen, we're making a hearty cauliflower and Swiss chard bake. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, you're live on SABC3. We're about to get cooking with our bake. We right. are. Right, what do we do first? So, well, the first thing that I noticed when I put this dish together was the lack of ingredients. We're using, like, this. minimal ingredients. That's what we're kind of doing. Now, this isn't the budget week that we did a <laughs> while ago. We're actually just focusing on, on the actual ingredients and how to and make the them work best. Yes, to work on those flavors. So, what I'm using, the base of this bake is going to be our cauliflower, mm -hmm. and I spoke about how we're going to do this differently to how we've been taught how to yeah. prepare cauliflower. Yeah. So you mentioned already that you were taught to boil it, right? I only know how to boil it and whack some cheese sauce on it. There we go. Yeah. But I mean, cauliflower can be eaten raw. Just yes, grated, and it can be turned into like a cauliflower couscous. If you're a vegan and stuff. Well, actually, you know what? Even if you're just trying to like have a lighter <laughs> midweek meal, it's a great option. Oh, vegans too. I mean, let's make them happy. Like yeah, once yeah, in if you're just trying to have a healthier approach <laughs> to life. But unfortunately, not for the vegans because we're using cream today. Sorry. Okay. okay. Sorry. Oh, no. So the way I prepare my cauliflower is keeping it quite chunky. I call them cauliflower steaks because I cut them as thick as thick steaks. Hmm. So I'm talking about that thick. Wow, so yeah, I mean. that's quite thick. And also, by not cooking it before the time or steaming it, I keep some of the texture in there, which so often people, when it comes to vegetables in general, and I think it's just the way that we've been yeah, taught to cook. Yeah, people want to kill the texture. Everything. When yeah. it comes to green beans, it's amazing. They call it green beans, but by the time it's done, it's like gray beans. Yeah, and that's just yeah, how our yeah. grannies were Mashed taught beans. to cook and taught like us to cook. So the idea is keep everything chunky, Your keep granny it fresh. Your granny must have been a pro if she taught you She that. was. I mean, I'm lucky I come from, a fam come from a family that cooks, so, yeah. you know. So, okay, next one is, I'm using Swiss chard. Okay. So Swiss chard, we spoke about this earlier. It's yeah, just a type I asked of you what the difference is between, yeah. So I've actually done this dish with morocco before. Okay. It works so well. I've done it with kale. I've done it with baby spinach. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have at home or whatever's on shelf, Works whatever perfectly. Whatever kind of spinach you want to use. Exactly. Okay. I mean, we even get stuff. We even get spinach called the bright lights now, which are the stalks that are like purple and yellow and orange, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just goes so well, so vibrant, especially in winter when food tends to turn brown. To actually add some color to your yeah. dishes, it means yeah. quite a lot, and it adds so much to the dish. So I'm just going to kind of like stuff them in there, mm -hmm. hide it. I want everything to kind of. And I'm not doing perfect layers. I want certain pots of cauliflower to stand out. And that bit of cauliflower is going to char off and give it that nice, like, smoky flavor. Mm. While mm. the ones at the bottom are going to cook in the cream and become extremely soft and delicious. And, yeah, but again, creamy. it's a different in texture. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, we're going to have the crunchy bits and the soft bits at the bottom. Okay. So I'm packing this full of spinach because I've once bought a pack of spinach for four people. Yeah. This is when I just when I was super young. Bought a pack of spinach for four people. You were super it down. young. How old are you now, Kim, the gym? I'm, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. But I'm, I'll probably be like okay, eight cool. or nine when I yeah. make, was making dinner. Yeah. Bought a big bag of spinach, put it in the pot. Five minutes later, there was like... A handful of spinach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lesson yeah, learned. So even with this dish, pack it really full of that spinach that's going to cook down. And again, the top, top bits of the spinach are going to go super crispy. Yeah. And at the bottom, it's going to wilt down like we normally know. Okay. Okay, awesome. so all our banters out there are going to be really happy right now because we're using cream. So you can easily make a cheese sauce. Okay. And you go through the process of no, making a No, we're not going cheese sauce. Really. Not, today, yeah, not today, not today. I mean, we might we're add some cheese to the end. We might add some cheese to the end. But for the beginning, I'm just going to use cream because it's really simple. I really mean it when I say this is a great midweek meal. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, there's certain things you should maybe have in the fridge or maybe on the way home to stop and get some extra cream. Yeah, yeah. Don't stand there making a roux and a cheese sauce. Right, no, 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 no right. one has time for that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. In our cream, some nutmeg because I can't ever imagine doing a cauliflower bake without nutmeg. Without nutmeg, It's Why? just like such a signature like combination. Mm. You've got anytime I do cauliflower or broccoli or macaroni and cheese with that fact, a little bit of nutmeg. You put in some nutmeg? Yeah. Okay. So that goes in there. But again, a little bit goes a long way with nutmeg. And I think I've even mentioned before that adding too much nutmeg, if we, if we eat too much nutmeg, it actually becomes an hallucinogen. Really? Let's, let's not try that Should today. Should we try that thing right now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> nutmeg in there. I'm going to add a bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Again, salt and pepper, best friends of cauliflower. It needs that extra seasoning. Cauliflower doesn't really have a very strong flavor, yeah. so give yeah. it that seasoning. I'm going to chop up some 
parsley. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use half of it because I want to sprinkle some fresh parsley on the bake at the end. At the end. So okay. chop it up. I find it's easier to actually mix your nutmeg, your salt and pepper, and your parsley into the actual bowl that you're okay. using. Because that way, when you pour it, it's evenly being distributed throughout yeah. your bake. Yeah, yeah. So give that a mix. And if, if I can ask you, if you can pass me the garlic, please. Of course. So I'm sort of pour that over. So it might look like a lot of cream, but what happens is... Does cauliflower the, have its own um, water in it? It does. It has does a lot of moisture it? in there. Yeah. Which I find quite strange when people steam cauliflower and they lose all the extra moisture. Right, right. Cook it just like this. There's enough moisture in there. So yeah. I'm going to take this garlic. And this, again, is going to add amazing flavour. I'm going to cut straight through the garlic mm. bowl. And it's going to roast in the dish with our cauliflower and Swiss chard. And wow. what's going to happen is... it's going to infuse all that flavour of the garlic. And, and the at the end, we'll be able to squeeze that garlic out over the dish. Oh, yummy. It'll be yummy. amazing. You're a star. And what's in here? Olive oil. Olive Just oil. in case you want to give it a little drizzle of olive oil. You've got now? enough fat in the cream. You can, definitely. Okay. So you can give it a drizzle. And that's enough. That's pretty much enough. In I love olive it. oil, so I'll put olive extra, oil on extra, anything. Extra, go for extra, it. Extra, extra. This goes to the oven for about 40 minutes until yeah. you start seeing yeah. the cream reduce and your cauliflower is really like baked and crispy and charred. And then in the second part, I'm going to take it from being a vegetarian dish to something a little naughty. Oh, I'm going to go with some okay, bacon okay, on top. Okay, you're going to take it to the left. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. Back to sports with Dan. Indeed. So that takes 40 minutes in the oven. This that we're about to speak about takes 24 hours. Kick 24 is a 24-hour soccer tournament being held in Cape Town, which hosts locals to challenge the all-star team, which consists of local heroes from Ajax, Patterman Stars, etc. The main goal is to transform communities in a positive way and to raise urban heroes. We're back with Nathan Paulsa as well as Jonathan. And joining us is Bruce, the CEO of the Sports Chaplaincy South Africa, and Mark, the organizer of the tournament, uh, one of the directors as well are from the Messenger Trust. Guys, it's good to have you all with us today. So Bruce, Thank Mark, welcome to The Loft and good to have you two Thanks. back with us. Uh, let's talk about Kick24. What was the, the idea behind the tournament? Uh, it was, it's the first time we're running the tournament, so we're really excited about it. Uh, we're crazy enough to have a team that will play for 24 hours and they'll be pl playing against teams all around Cape Town. So it's going to be, uh, these guys have signed up for it, which will be uh, a tough one for them. But we just thought it'd be a great way to raise ways up awareness for what we're doing as charities in Cape Town. Okay, well, let's take that one step back. What does it mean to play for 24 hours? Are these guys going to be on the field for 24 hours straight, or are they tournaments and games yeah. happening for a period of 24 hours with breaks in between? So the 24 hour, the kick pro team, as we're calling it, plays for elements. Well, they play for the 24 hours, but certain players Jeez. will come on and play during that time. So they're playing a good whack of time. Uh, we do have players that will play throughout, so it's going to be a big challenge for them. Yeah, sure, that is going to, to be grueling. Yeah. They thought that a game on, in a big stadium would have been grueling. This is exactly, on some yeah. other level. Uh, Bruce, obviously the sports chaplaincy is playing an incredible role with the, when it comes to communities and particularly trying to make sure that sport doesn't lose its element of, of, of humanity yeah. in its essence. Uh, talk to us about your involvement and why this is so important for communities to get involved with. I mean, for Sports Chaplaincy South Africa, this is, this is just the right fit for us to be involved in, in, a, in a superb event like this and also to connect players with the opportunity to, to give back. You know, the heart of what, what we're about is, is care and mentoring mm. for high-performance athletes. And you've heard these guys talk briefly about some of the challenges that they face, not just on the field, but, but off the field. Yeah. I think when people look at professional sport, and high-profile sport, they tend to look at the triumphs. They tend to look at the glory and the celebrity. But actually, there's a darker side to sport as mm, well. Mm. High levels of divorce, dependency on drugs and alcohol, uh, of debt, and even of depression. Um, recent research shows that 37% of professional footballers globally suffer from um, clinical sure. depression at some point in their lives. Um, and we want to be there when it all goes wrong. Mm -hmm. But we also want to play our part in um, preparing young sports people to make the most of the opportunity they have so they don't become victims exactly. of the industry that they're part of. Yeah. You know, these are two great success stories. And I'm not talking about their achievements on the field, I'm talking about who they've become off the mm -hmm. field uh, as men. These are great role models to have involved in an event like mm -hmm. Kick 24 because they're the kind of men that young people growing up in our communities can um, be Look inspired by. Mm, absolutely, and it's real that role model, so they can see you in the streets as well and be like, you are the same person that I know from, from, from the TV screens. But you two must have chosen to get involved because you love the cause, and both of you have had an experience of what it's like to be involved in the fame and glory and decide that you want to do it for more than just that. Um, why do you think some of the other players are coming on board? Is it for similar reasons? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, I know a large part, if not all, of, of the of, of the um, guys on our on our squad, you know, on on the on the um, Kick, Kick Twenty Four All Star team, and they all share the same art. You know, we we all all um, have this have this urge to give back, because mm -hmm. um, I believe that that you are you, you are uh, blessed to to bless others. Yeah. And that's and that's it. You know, so. uh, fame and. Everything else is, 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 is you know, I'm par for the for, for the course. If you if you work hard and you stay yeah. humble, but it's to um, empower others, exactly. you know. So I'm just uh, honoured to watch be uh, a part <laughs> of this uh, initiative. You know? Amazing. So Mark, who, who are we raising money for, and how are we going to do that? Yeah. So uh, the, it's the Message Trust. It's the charity I work for. And then Sports Chaplaincy, which is Bruce. So that's the two charities that benefit from the event. And the way we, we raise the funds is teams come and challenge the pro team and get to play at Ajax, play on the nice 4G field. Mm. And they pay a fee to do that. And then we have prizes that go around the event as well. Okay. So it's just, yeah, it's just a nice, easy way for corporates, for you know, community organisations to come and get involved. We have corporate teams, we have churches, we have... You know, just local football clubs all playing. We even have clubs coming out three o'clock in the morning to play, oh. uh, uh, play against these guys. So so these guys clearly believe that they got what it takes. I think everyone's hoping for yeah. that eleven o'clock, uh, that eleven o'clock match towards the end of the tournament. These guys are <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they might they might go away then at that point. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see who the hardcore guys are. You know? Okay. You've mentioned so. prizes. What is this? Now this is a ball that was signed just a few weeks ago by the uh, Premiership winning side in England, Leicester City. Hey, so it's got hey. Jamie Vardy, Riyad Mahrez, Ranieri, N'Golo Kante and those guys. We're going to be auctioning that off at the event. Sure. So if you've got loads of that, yeah, okay, bring it along you with can you. own a ball signed by the Leicester City sure. squad. Man, that is going to be phenomenal. Mm. Really, really is. Bruce, obviously you're very passionate about the communities. You're passionate about growth. I mean, this is why you've dedicated your life to do what you do. Yeah. Um, how can communities get involved? I know you said that you can bring teams forward, but uh, you said that this is all about developing communities. How, how do they get involved and how do they benefit? I think uh, people who might be interested in our work uh, and at a grassroots level, what the message are doing in terms of uplifting youth um, in communities uh, that are struggling with gangsterism and mm. crime and unemployment, uh, it's incredible the work they're doing. And, um, you know, I'd encourage anybody who's listening who wants to see real radical change in our communities mm. to connect with these guys, those, those who are, are, are passionate about seeing sports people cared for and mentored, then, yeah. then, then we're the people to talk to. On the day, um, unfortunately, we can't have general admission for all sorts of security reasons. The teams that take part are allowed to bring spectators and, and friends. Um, if this goes well, and we believe it will, then next year we're, we're planning something even bigger and wow. better. Um, will it go and, national? And, um, well, uh, we're certainly planning something here in Cape Town. Um, our hope is, isn't it, to have something yeah. much bigger. Okay. Uh, next year, we just want to show that this can work. Uh, this is an idea that has that has legs and will run for for, for maybe many years to come, uh, and raise lots and lots of vital resources sure. for for two great charities. Fantastic, man! It sounds like an incredible lot of fun as of all the guys attending. But uh, for you two, final comment on uh, sort of two young footballers who are wanting to get involved uh, in in the sport professionally, uh, particularly those communities who are struggling with things like gangster and violence and things. Uh, what are your words to them? Yeah, my, like what my words were earlier, value character. Mm -hmm. And yourself? I think it's believe in yourself, you know, because you'll, you'll get, you'll get um, um, people out there, uh, friends, family even, that will, that will say, no, you can't do it, you know. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if, if you dream it, believe in yourself and just, and just work hard every single day sure. and uh, eventually you will, you, you will um, get, get your dreams as, as uh, we, we have. have. Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much for all of you for joining us with, uh, in the loft today. It's really, Thanks really so cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys want to go check out Kick24, it takes place this Friday, the 3rd of June, from 12 o'clock midday to Saturday, the 4th of June, also 12 o'clock midday, at the IX Cape Town Ikamva Training Ground. After the break, we're joined by endurance athlete and triathlon coach Steve Atwell for some health and fitness inspiration. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, for many of us, getting healthy and fit is something we would love to do. And we might know many ways to do so, but what is usually the hardest part is just to begin. Whether it's lacking motivation or knowing how, we struggle to start. We want to inspire and learn how to go about this, along with our friends at NutriBullet, who make it easier and more convenient than ever to lead a healthy lifestyle. Today in the loft, Steve Atwell, triathlon coach and owner of Embark, who is committed at getting beginners into multi-sport. Welcome to the loft. Good, thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, so how do we start getting healthy? Anyone who's watching right now is like, I want to change my life, I want to start eating differently, and I want to lead a healthy lifestyle. How do they do it? You, you have to pick a goal, first of all. And once you've picked that goal, you've got to stick to it. I'd say if it's doing the Argus or doing a park run or swimming Robin Island, whatever that goal is, you've just got to pick a goal. And you then have to go and tell people what you're doing. There's got to be some accountability. So tell your families, tell your friends, go and tell your boss at work yeah. that this is what you're yeah. doing. And every day they'll ask you, how's your training going? How are you doing? And essentially that way it'll keep you mot motivated at the same time. Now for your personal story, just tell us a bit about yourself, what you do, and how you got to just value healthy eating and healthy living. My mom was a phys ed teacher, so I kind of grew up on the field doing sports all my life, which was great. And I found triathlon about 13 years ago when I lived in the UK. And I really love that sport. It's such a diverse sport. You don't have to be good at uh, triathlon itself. Yeah. You can just be individually uh, average at all three of the swimming and the biking and the running yeah. and you become quite a good triathlete yeah. that way as well. It is very diverse because the training is quite diverse at the same time. What kind um, of training goes into it? Well, it depends what event you're doing. So triathlon is again diverse. You can do quite a small triathlon. You can go right up to doing Ironman, which is the pinnacle, which ends with, an, with the marathon at the end. So the training go, that goes into it is obviously what event you're doing. But you should be biking or swimming or running once every day as well. Once every day. Because yeah. I was about to ask you, for, I mean, being a triathlete is one thing um, because being healthy and fit is essential to doing that. But if I'm just wanting to be healthy and fit for my lifestyle, how, how often should I be exercising a week? Um, well, exactly as you say, whatever the goal is that you've picked, you have to yeah. train specifically for that. So yeah. if the goal is just to stay fit, then I would say training once a day is probably a good thing. You know, you kind of get into a healthy lifestyle. When you've picked a goal and you're training for something specific, then you know that a late night is not going to help you in the morning to get up. You know that drinking that extra glass of wine is not going to help you. So it's like hand in hand, it starts to bring you into a healthy lifestyle already. Yeah. You start to eat better because if yeah. you get up and you're tired or you can't finish a session because you're tired, you know, you, you yeah. then have to yeah. uh, write the stuff down and find out why is it not working for you or go and see a sports nutrition or do something to keep that, the healthy side yeah. going as well. And obviously healthy eating is essential to endurance and mental agility. Um, what kind of food should we be eating to improve our mental agility? Uh, well, and what uh, works against it? I think everyone is very different. So the best thing you can do is to go and see a, a, a dietitian or a sports mm -hmm. nutritionist. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are um, guidelines that you can follow. You generally, you should be eating something before you go and train. And if it's breakfast, maybe a decent cereal or toast or something that your body likes. I mean, you've got to test these things. Yeah. I always tell a lot of the athletes, write the stuff down that you're eating. That you're keep, eating. Keep a diary of it and see, did you feel good during that session or did you not feel good? And eliminate the foods that don't make you feel good and eat more of the foods that do make you yeah. feel good. That always try and eat something as soon as you're finished or have a protein shake or something when you're finished just to give the body the goodness just to revive itself right. so that you can train right. the following day. And how do you personally balance eating healthy and exercising? It's, for me, it's a way of life. As I said, my mom was a PT teacher as well, so we always used to eat. We'd always eat a vegetarian meal every night. We only ate meat about once a week as well. So I think Is meat a baddie? Of, would you No, would it's you not say a baddie. I just think we've got a very, very diet. So it's a very <laughs> yeah, balanced yeah. diet. She'd always make us eat fish as well once a week, and we'd always eat a curry once a week as well. But yeah. there was a very balanced diet, and vegetables were a big thing. Fruit, she always made sure that we ate breakfast before we went out to school as well. The rule was we weren't allowed to go to school unless we ate breakfast. So. Wow, well, yeah, I like <laughs> yeah. that rule. I have that rule in my house. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> so if anyone's watching and they want to be a triathlete, where, where do they start? I mean, is it, is it that you have to have fitness ability, I mean, sport ability already, no. or can I just start from scratch now? Not at all. You can um, embark the program that we run. Uh, it actually takes beginners off the couch and straight into the triathlon training. We'll teach you everything you need to know about triathlon, and we would have picked a predetermined goal anyway, and we train for that event. So it's either three months or six months to your first triathlon, and wow. over those six months, you will gain the confidence in swimming and biking and running, and you'll have a mentor that takes you all the way through. You'll follow a structured program all the way through. And essentially, at the end of it, you will finish that triathlon and get that medal. Wow. 
Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining okay, us. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yes, making that initial decision can be tricky, but the results at the end will be so worth it. All the hard work. Nutribullet helps to make it super easy. And if you'd like to know more about our recipes and ideas, visit www.nutribullet.co.za. Dan, standing by. All right, South Africa, it's time for us to get down to business. We've played nice for too long now. Last week, our contestants all got their inspiration for Winner Home Season 3 right here on Afternoon Express. Our judges are in the building. Our contestants are too, and we're about to reveal what their first task is going to be. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Winner Home is all about local design, beautiful architecture, property, and financing it all. But essentially, it is a competition, and we have three designers chomping at the bite, at the bit, uh, to walk away with our next Winner Home winner. Uh, Joanne, Minentle, and Rudolf, welcome back to the loft. You guys have got a lot on your plates at the moment. It's time for us to almost get into your first uh, challenge for today. How are you all feeling at this point? Let's start with you, Rudolf. Well, I'm quite excited to hear what, what, what we need to do and yeah, let's see what we can do. Cool, Minentle. I'm very excited and looking forward to what we have to do. Okay, Joanne? A little nervous, but very excited as well. Oh, a lot lies ahead for you guys. Yeah. You've seen exactly what the inspiration is like. There's a lot at stake here, but it's time for you guys to have a look at what you're going to be creating for your first challenge. Now, and to help that is, of course, our three expert judges, Simon Bray, CEO of Private Property, the lovely Anne Result from Plascon's Global Color Manager, and representing ARC today, we have architect and director Mark Riley. Today, we also take a look at their first brief, the guest bedroom. So welcome back to our judges. It's good to have you guys all together in the loft. Finally, our contestants get to meet the judges and uh, get a sense of what their first task is going to be. But we haven't really expounded too much on what they're being judged on. So should we start with you, Simon? What are you judging on? I'm not going to pretend to be a, a color expert or a design expert. I mean, I'm here just to talk property and to focus on particularly what adds value to a property. And I think good design adds value. Uh, and of course, uh, the marketability of a home. How easy is it to sell mm -hmm. down the line? So they're going to keep the business perspective in their mind while they're creating these beautiful homes. Uh, and yourself, what are you judging on? Well, I'm going to be scoring on obviously the use of colour and um, texture and also overall creativity. Cool. And yourself? Um, well, we're looking at the overall design concept and we also need to look at the execution in terms of how well they put everything together. Yes. I mean, this has to be a project that a client has to be able to move into. Yes, so there are lots of elements to it. You guys are all going to be scoring out of 10 for each of your different portfolios. And so there's a lot at stake, I think, for our contestants that are here today. And they, all they need to know from now on is exactly what their task is going to be uh, for today. So, over the next 10 weeks, our design contestants will have to complete all the rooms in their apartment. Each room will be allocated a time of two weeks to complete. At the end of, end of each of those two week periods, you the viewer get to vote for your favorite room and the result will be factored into the judge's final decision. All right, so Mark, would you please tell us exactly what the brief is for our first room on Afternoon Express and Winner Home Season 3. YouTubers, thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.